Welcome YouTube viewers, I'm Jason from Jason G Designs. Just recently I did a tutorial describing how to create a collection of Linux desktop themes with an application called Themix. In that tutorial we generated several themes, an icon pack, and we explored how to use a color scheme. This tutorial is the next step, where we will tighten up some things with the GTK themes in order to make it look more polished. There are some slight rendering issues with the standard look. Besides that, we want some widgets to stand out. Themix automatically generates CSS for a dark variant, whether we specified one or not. In the case of this theme, we did not, so let's remove the references to the dark variant. Navigate to the theme's GTK-3.20 folder and right click to open the file GTK .gresource.xml in a text editor. At the bottom, you will see the reference to gtk-dark.css. You can safely delete that line. Make sure to save the file. There is another similar file in the gtk-3.0 folder. Delete the reference there as well. Then we can delete the actual gtk dark.css files from three locations. The gtk 3.20 parent folder, the gtk 3.0 folder, and the one inside the disks folder. In order for us to see our changes as we are making them, we must make an adjustment to the gtk.css file in the gtk-3.20 folder. We will copy the import line at the top of the file and paste it below that line. After, we want to comment out the import statement above and remove everything inside the copied URL up to dist. What we are doing here is referencing the gtk.css file in the dist folder, where we will be making changes from. In the next step, we will utilize GTK3 Widget Factory, an application that showcases most of the GTK widgets. A quick Google search turns up how to install it on Ubuntu-based systems. For ArchSpace systems, you can install with the GTK3 demos package. Another program we will need is the GTK Inspector. A link for how to set it up will be in the description. In order to use GTK Inspector with any GTK3 application, just hit the Control shift d keyboard combo and click OK when prompted. If you activate GTK Inspector with an application and nothing happens, it is likely a QT or GTK2 application. Using GTK Inspector, we can look for the code that refers to an application's top-level menu. For this, we can click the target symbol to select an object, in this case a menu. Then. In the drop-down, select CSS nodes to see a tree representation of the structure. In this case, we are interested in the menus inside of the menu bar, as we are trying to remove extra padding around the menu. Scrolling down within the right side pane, we can see that padding for the inner menu is referenced on line 3751 in the text editor. Let's open our themes gtk.css file in, in the dist folder. Going to line 3751, it looks like all the main menus are targeted. Cool. In this clip we can see the padding in question. So, we simply change the padding to 0 pixels and save. 
After closing and reopening GTK3 widget factory, the padding is now removed. This looks cleaner. Mousing over the menus in the application I'm coding in, Bluefish, I notice the accelerator labels are white against a light color. This is bad for legibility, so let's fix that. Using our text editor search functionality, let's look for the word accelerator to go to the line for it. Right now, it is an RGBA variation of white, but we want a variation of our text color. To get it, we can use GTK Inspector to get the thing's text color from, say, the text view. Conveniently, this color is given in the RGB format. We can plug in the colors 31, 27, and 21 in place of the white color values and save. As you can now see, the color has been fixed. Next, we need to make the color of the select button, which is a selected action button, darker to contrast with the light background. Let's use GTK Inspector to select it. The line in the editor to find this is line 1696. We will change the color to our dark text color. By the way, did you know that you can change the theme to dark and back to see changes in GTK3 widget factory without closing and restarting? Let's also fix the hover color. Mousing over the select button and then reading the line number in the inspector will give us what we need. On line 1845, we can change the hover and focus color to pure black. We can use some padding around the main toolbars. Comments in this file are denoted by an exclamation mark followed by the name of the section. In this case, we will type exclamation toolbar into the text editor search. Let's make the padding 6 pixels. This looks more spacious. By default, the place's sidebar, which shows file locations, looks a little plain. Let's make it look better. In the gtk.css file, search for place's sidebar. We will add a background color of dbbb90 to list within the place's sidebar. Next, we will use the GTK Inspector to choose the selected list row. Going to approximately line 4898, let's add a dark border to the left to further emphasize the selected row. The path bar that goes above the place's sidebar can use some extra padding too. Type path bar box into your text editor search box. We can get the code from the Omnu Champagne theme fixes file that adds padding inside of the buttons.
and to the right of Images Within buttons. The look is depicted at the top of the File Selection dialog. This same background use everywhere is a little much. Opening GTK Inspector, we can see that the parent of this type of element is the notebook, and each side is the pane element. The left side here in Space FM is covered by a view widget. We're going to make this color half as saturated as it currently is. But the paint element here does not have a background color, so we are going to look at its parent item, a stack. Noting its background color, we will use a color converter, Pico Step, to make the saturation in the HSL colors half. First, we plug the colors noted from the GTK inspector into the RGB fields. And take the saturation down to 45, approximately half. To contrast better with the elements surrounding the notebook, let's make the color lighter as well. Looking for the notebook section in our text editor, all we need to do is add the generated color from Pico's tab as a background for notebook panes. After restarting, notebook panes now have a subtler background. The scales, when next to other widgets, are too close together. Let's add some padding around all scales. This accords to line 6506 in the text editor. Here, we can double the padding to 6 pixels. Tooltips look messed up in open box. Even though the PyCom compositor I'm using supports rounded corners, we want our theme to be consistent for those who don't have compositing enabled. So, let's make the tooltips have squared corners, but only in desktop environments that support it. The .csd class is a good way to figure if rounded corners are supported, because client-side decorated windows are usually found in desktop environments with built-in compositors. The .solid csd class is reserved for DEs that don't have built-in compositors. Thus, we can use that class to target the tooltip differences. First, we will remove the border radius for general tooltips. And paste the tooltip code from the theme fixes file. This code adds border radius only to tooltips that have the .csd class. The GTK theme looks nicer and more polished, would you agree? To edit the theme, we needed to address where our parent level gtk.css file was pointing to. We need to point it back to its original location and then recompile it into a binary. If you ever wanted to know how to work with the confusing files Themex gives you, the next tutorial might be of interest. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Linux content. Thanks, my viewers, for watching.